In 2002, Disney released what many consider to be an unremarkable toy. But little did everyone know that in a few years' time, this bear would make a comeback and it would make him an icon of overseas Disney parks. Hello everyone, I'm Lucy, your ghostly guide through all things Disney. Today we're talking about Duffy the Disney Bear and all his little friends. Duffy is a bit of a... polarizing character in the States. And as my assistant found during research, there's also quite a bit of discourse surrounding Duffy. But I think he's an interesting part of Disney history and should be talked about. So, let's talk about Duffy's past. Duffy's story starts in 2002 in Orlando, Florida. Back when Disney Springs was still called Downtown Disney, Once Upon a Toy was opening and they debuted with a very special toy, the Disney Bear. This adorable plushie came in several different colors and at this point in time, it didn't have the name Duffy. It was just the Disney Bear. Very creative. Despite the genericness of the toy, it came with a pretty cute backstory. Mickey Mouse brought his favorite teddy bear with him to the Magic Kingdom. Sitting in front of Cinderella's castle, Mickey Mouse made a wish that he had someone to share his excitement with in the magic of the park. Tinkerbell heard his wish and sprinkled Mickey Mouse's teddy bear with pixie dust. Mickey Mouse's teddy bear was brought to life. The plush was... Not well received. The plush was cute enough, but it wasn't the most creative thing in the world. As much as I personally like Duffy, this debut was less than stellar. But given the Disney bear was created to entice people to visit Once Upon a Toy, it was really not great. The Disney bear was panned. People weren't really interested in it and a lot of people criticized it, calling it uninspired, and some going as far as saying this plush was another example of Disney branding going too far and trying to capitalize on everything and anything. Sales were terrible and by 2004, Disney bears were popping up in Disney outlet stores. The Disney bear most likely would have faded in obscurity had it not been for the Oriental Land Company. The year is still 2004, and the Oriental Land Company, who's in charge of the Tokyo Disney Resort, saw the Disney bear and decided to bring it over for the Christmas celebration that year. He was given new products, and he even had a character meet and greet. The Disney bear debuted in the Tokyo Disney Resort in November 2004, and from here, there's conflicting reports on his initial success. Some say the reception was fairly positive, but not a critical success. Some Japanese sources say the Disney Bear merch sold out in a couple of days upon debut, but no matter the exact reception, it was a lot better than the American response, and the Disney Bear was set to return to the Tokyo parks. For Christmas 2005, after a revamp, the Disney Bear re-debuted at Tokyo Disney Sea. This is where the discourse starts, <laughs> but I'll address that in the end, so hang on. Anyway, his name was now Duffy the Disney Bear, and he was given a brand new backstory. Instead of being a teddy bear brought to life by Tinkerbell's magic, Duffy was a plush sewn by Minnie as a gift for Mickey. She placed the bear into Mickey's duffel bag, hence the name Duffy, and when Mickey left on a trip, he discovered the bear Minnie had slipped into his bag. Mickey and Duffy traveled all around the world together and became good friends. He was also given a home in the Cape Cod section of American Waterfront and was made integral to the area. This time, all sources agree he was a complete smash hit. Duffy was, and still is, incredibly popular in the Tokyo Disney Resort, and executives decided to keep Duffy as a year-round meet-and-greet past Christmas. His success was growing and growing, and the U.S. parks took notice of Duffy's rise to fame. 2010 was a huge year for Duffy. He traveled overseas and made his debut in Hong Kong Disneyland as well as coming to the United States. In California, Duffy made a home in California Adventure, and in Florida, he resided at Epcot. Disney was no doubt hoping to replicate the success Duffy had in Japan. Duffy did very well in Hong Kong. As for the French parks, Duffy didn't come over until 2011, and given they still sell Duffy merch, I would assume they were fairly warm to his debut. But again, he wasn't popular in the US parks. And again, more discourse that I'll get into at the end. However, this failed attempt at reviving Duffy in the US didn't stop Duffy's activities in Japan. Back home in Tokyo, the show My Friend Duffy debuted, and with it came a new character in what Robert Niles from Theme Park Insider calls the Duffy Plush Universe, or the DPU. And no, my assistant and I will not call it anything but this. <laughs> Duffy's male bird friend Tippy Blue made his very first appearance in My Friend Duffy. Since 2010, several new characters have been introduced into the DPU. In 2011, Duffy's girlfriend Shelly May debuted to massive success. 2014 saw the addition of Gelatoni, a kitty artist, and in 2017, Stella Lou, a bunny Broadway hopeful, took the stage. 2018 had two new additions, and they were both outside of Tokyo Disney Sea. 
In Hong Kong, Cookie, a puppy who loves making waffles, debuted. Although note that she's now called Cookie Ann. And Olu, the musician turtle, made his home at Disney's Aulani Resort. Although Duffy and his friends have thrived in overseas parts, he still struggled in the U.S. In 2015, Duffy was phased out of DCA in Epcot. He made his very last Epcot meet and greet on October 3, 2015. He'd been shelved at DCA a few months prior, but I haven't been able to find a concrete date for that. It's now 2020 and Duffy is still beloved by overseas parks. Duffy merch is always around and his meet and greets are still popular. In the U.S., it's not a stretch to say a lot of people have probably forgotten about Duffy, at least on the West Coast. When Duffy left in 2015, we didn't get any remnants of him unlike Epcot, who kept him as the Kidcot mascot until 2018. He hasn't had a park presence in a couple of years and even when he was present, he didn't make a huge impression. That's not to say everyone in the U.S. hates Duffy. My assistant came across a few hardcore fans missing Duffy and upset he was leaving. And now, the discourse. <sighs> Many people discuss whether Duffy and the Disney Bear are truly the same entity and all I want to say is this. Whatever you believe, Duffy would not be here without the Disney Bear and it's valid to put the two together, especially when putting together a timeline because they're connected to each other, or even just in discussion. And then there's the second part of discourse. Why did Duffy fail to take the U.S. by storm like he's done literally everywhere else? My assistant and I discussed this at length and ultimately we believe there's one major factor in why Duffy didn't reach his full potential. This was a point brought up in some forums, but several users claimed Disney didn't put as much care into the presentation and story of Duffy compared to the Oriental Land Company. The U.S. just tacked him onto existing areas and called it a good job, but OLC took the time to fully integrate Duffy into the Cape Cod area of Disney Sea and make him not just a character, but an experience. The U.S. did not have that. From what my assistant remembers of Duffy being in California Adventure, he wasn't given any additional story material or treated like anything but merch and a meet and greet. They didn't feel like there was anything to him besides this, whereas OLC carefully crafted Duffy to be an experience and to also be something akin to a family member or friend. Duffy didn't exactly get that treatment, at least on the West Coast. He was just there. If Duffy had been given the same treatment that OLC had given him by Disney here in the States, it's possible Duffy could have drummed up enough love and support to stay forever, but unfortunately, we'll never know that for certain. It's a bittersweet situation. On one hand, lots of people in the U.S. have probably missed their chance to have a new friend in Duffy. My assistant in particular was telling me how they've been kicking themselves that they didn't buy a Duffy when he was at DCA because it would have been nice to bring him along during a lot of their solo trips to Disneyland. And it's also sad to think about how many people hate Duffy by extension of what they think he stands for. Disney trying to capitalize on everything. And while that is an issue in general, the fact Duffy suffers from it when he wasn't in other countries was even sadder. If Duffy had gotten different treatment in the US, those people who hate him potentially could have been fans. But then we have the positives. It's really just the US where Duffy is unpopular. He's still beloved all over the world and in the majority of Disney resorts. Out of all of them, there's only two where he doesn't have a presence and even in the US, he still has a fan base, albeit it's small. He has a home in every other park and even though it feels like he completely failed, he didn't. He and his friends are thriving in other parks and ultimately, he's still loved. And so concludes the history of Duffy. Thank you very much for tuning in today. If you'd like to read more about Duffy, I've provided all my sources in the description box, as well as a note saying what language they're in. But don't be discouraged if a source is in Japanese. According to my assistant, the auto-translate on those pages from Japanese to English is fairly decent. Uh, although they said if you know some Japanese, it would probably just be best to break out a kanji dictionary and reference that if you come across kanji you don't know. But I digress. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more videos about Disney history. If you'd like to keep up to date with my latest videos, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you get alerted whenever I upload a new video. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Bye bye!